you will hear a recorded message if you could just ignore that and above okay chairman i can confirm that you're live on youtube all right then kathy right um what good morning i'd like to thank everybody members and officers for today's uh attending the meeting of the planning committee and could i please have a polite request that all phones public and officers and members go on to silent please so we don't have them ringing out and disturbing and i'm going to ask democratic services officer which is kathy wag to conduct a roll call to check councillors who are present at this meeting thank you councillor Bay. present councillor bauer present councillor burb present councillor cross no oh, he's not here councillor Diwali. Present. Councillor Holmes. Present. Councillor Howland. Present. Councillor Hudson. Not here. Uh, Councillor Lawton. Present. Councillor Manning. Present. Councillor Knockholds. Present. Councillor Parrish. Present. Councillor Spiking. Present. Councillor Tyler. Present. Councillor Whitby. Present. Councillor Rose. Present. Councillor Morley. Present. And Councillor Long. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Cross has sent his apologies. And I now see Councillor Mrs. Hudson now coming in. Christine, are you coming? Because the meeting started. There's a seat just next to Councillor Tyler here. There's a seat here. If you would, would you sit there, please? Then we can see you. Because you won't. Can you see it all right there and here? Because I know sometimes you have a trouble. Or yeah. Bob. Or else Bob Lawton. There's two. Take your pick. Be easy for you. All right. <laughs> right. Um, I'd like to remind members that the meeting's being recorded and streamed live via YouTube, and it will still be recording during breaks. Because of the acoustics in the town hall, Please only turn your microphone on when it's your turn to speak and off and remember to use it because otherwise people listening on YouTube cannot hear you. And please do not leave the meeting during an item, otherwise you will not be able to take part in the debate or vote on the matter because you haven't heard all the debate. So now we move on to the book, which is item one, which is apologies, Kathy, please. Thank you. Apologies received from Councillor Crofts, Councillor Patel and Councillor Rose is substituting Councillor Rust and Councillor Morley is substituting, and Councillor Story and, and Councillor Long is substituting. Yeah, and I'd like to thank the subs for stepping into the breach. It's much appreciated. You've given up your time. And item two minutes. Can I confirm as a correct record the minutes of the meeting held on the 9th of January 2023? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Declarations of interest to anybody. Anybody declarations of interest in these planning applications? No. Um, we then go on to four, which is urgent business understanding order seven. There is one and that we're going to have an extra planning meeting on Monday, the 24th of April, because we need to get in some more before the election and afterwards when there won't be one in May, a meeting. So if you could put in your diaries, please, it will be confirmed by Kathy, Monday, the 24th. And then item five, members attending understanding order 34. I've got Councillor Dark and Councillor Gidney for Heacham. Item six is Chairman's Correspondence. Any I've received, I've read and passed to the relevant officers. Item seven, do I have your agreement to, see, to receive the late correspondence, please? Agreed. And then eight, index of applications A, you note the decisions. And then we now go on to page 10, which is Thornham. There's late correspondence and two speakers. And it's proposed extension and alterations to an existing dwelling. It's a full application and the recommendation here is approved and it's a deferred item. Right. That's me. Thank you, um, Chairman. OK, thank you. So the application was deferred from committee on the 18th of November to get um, clarification on the accuracy of the plans. Uh, as you can see from the report on page 10, this has now occurred with both sites, visits with the, um, the applicant uh, agent, 
um, and the case officer, as well as the neighbouring um, party, in terms of relationship between the proposed extension and the neighbour to the north. So this is the uh, development as it is. Um, it it reads as a pair, but that's it. Actually, it's um, a single dwelling being converted some time, um, set in uh, this plot as identified by my, my little red cursor here. Uh, and the site is at Church Cottage, uh, Church Street, Thornham, which is to the north of the junction with the Orange Tree pub. The scheme originally came in um, uh, as shown on the, the screen uh, with, a, with an overhanging extension here and, and effectively change in the nature of the extensions. Um, given the, uh, the nature of the cottage, the proposed extensions considered them acceptable and, uh, a, a, and a revised scheme has been submitted which is more sympathetic to the uh, original cottage in terms of its replacements, uh, like for like of the dormers here, excuse me, and here, uh, and, and the balance between um, uh, the, the two areas um, of the property. A proposed extension uh, in this area here, which is two story, obviously at the moment it's, it's single, modest single. Again, it's a modest um, two story extension, extending 2.2 meters from the north of the property here, as you, as you can see. Uh, and in terms of height, uh, going from three metres originally to 5.1 metres um, here, uh, with an eaves height of uh, 3.2 metres uh, to, to this area uh, here. The, um, the window, uh, the round window on this elevation would be obscure glazed to protect any kind of views to the property to uh, the north, as you can see, and obviously single storey elements uh, here. And then a modest single storey extension to the back of the property, and then um, rejigging the, um, the roof um, area of the back of the property with the two dormers here and roof lights replacement roof lights here. Uh, and then the creation of the double doors uh, in this area. So these are the, this is the cottage um, as it is. So that's, that's one part of the front elevation and the other. Uh, this is the area in which would be demolished and then um, the extension uh, would be uh, on this end here, the northern end. And then looking back to the southeast, again, you can see uh, the extension, which would cut, sit just below uh, the, the original ridge line here, and again would project 2.2 metres to the north. Again, this would not um, interfere with the, uh, the windows on the front elevation property to the north. Again, uh, that's looking south to the northern elevation. You'll note there's an existing window on this northern elevation in terms of any relationships with the existing property as shown on the left-hand side here. And the back of the property, um, obviously these dormers will be removed in favour of two centralised dormers and then the, uh, the roof lights on this end and the northern end of the property. And then looking back to um, the west, so you've got the parking area here, this extension would come down again two story in this location here. And then that's the rear boundary and the northern boundary uh, and the neighboring dwelling. So that's to the north. And there we go for pictures. Uh, just like to point out, there is a duplication on uh, page 18 of your agenda pages, a, a, um, a sentence which is in bold, reads plans have confirmed to be correct. Uh, that's twice in that uh, third party objection. So um, just a duplication there to correct. The issues are outlined on page 10 of your agenda pages. It's recommended for approval and it's called in by Councillor Wharton. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Could I have James Haggard, please, to speak? Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. Oh, Mr. Haggy, would you like to nod to me or tell me when you want me to move the slide, please? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, it is no surprise that this cottage takes centre stage in the book on Thornham's history. Such as its iconic status, simple balance and charm, it is one of only three Thornham houses pictured on this map. This focal point of Church Street is also featured in the neighborhood plan under one of the most important views of Thornham. 
yet a relatively new temporary and mostly absentee custodian wants to change all of this to create a new bathroom and split the house into two. Next slide, please. The conservation officer originally said that the extension upsets the simple balance of the traditional cottage and is therefore unacceptable and would cause significant harm to the conservation area with no public benefit. Even with changes, it still does. 20 letters of objection and no public supporters. Local resident and former cabinet minister Patricia Hewitt said in one of her objections, if this application was accepted, it would be a travesty of the planning system, as well as Thornham's own neighborhood plan, the result of a very wide consultation and discussion and overwhelmingly passed in our local referendum. Next slide, please. The next three slides taken from the next door show just how close and overbearing the North Extension will be. Just 4.3 meters away, and currently only 1.6 meters tall at the nearest point, it will increase to 5.2 meters just below the current roof line. The new wide glazed side door will look into the front room. Black dots show the approximate position. The east extension will be even closer. Next uh, slide, please. If there is any thought of approving this application, then before doing so, I would urge council to do a site visit so that the true proximity can be seen. Reduced parking spaces make it virtually impossible for two cars to park, and slide 11 clearly shows this. Next slide, please. I have recently suggested an amendment to the plan which will appease many of the objections whilst giving this applicant a full-size bathroom to the rear of the property. Nearly 400 years of history will be destroyed by this application. Changing the appearance of this Thornham jewel has been described by the parish council as wanton vandalism. Next slide, please. Loved by residents and visitors alike, please do not allow its simple balance and character to be destroyed for the sake of another bathroom. There is no public support, and I urge council to refuse this application. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Could I have Jason Law next, please? Yeah. I'm just going to set my time, which I have in a All right. Give you an idea as you go along. Thank you ever so much. Thank you. Um, okay. I'm going to respond first to some of the comments just made. This is not the first application. So some of those 20 comments were all made during the first application. The conservation officer's comments were during the first application. There have been several amendments to this application since. Conservation officer now shows support and no objection to this. There have not been any public comments since the first application and on this amended one. The map at the beginning I thought was wonderful and it does show the cottage where it is. I'd like to know when that map was produced because anyone who knows anything about historical architecture will know that the two lean-to structures on the edge of these cottages are not original, but quite, quite not. Anyone who's been in the village in the local area for 40 odd years, like I have, will also know lots of the wonderful history about this property. They're called Bill and Ben's Cottages, and that's because two brothers occupied them for many, many years. And the symmetry of them was there from two brothers putting their efforts in. Post-war, these are people who were alive in my lifetime, not 400 years ago. And what we're doing here is we've got a very bad situation with surface water. And the end extension needs replacing, whether it's as it is or with the opportunity to do something different. And on that, there's something different. I pulled up to the car park here uh, behind this property we're in sitting in, having this meeting. And if you look at the back of this property, there are six different types of architecture in one building. And it looks wonderful. It's a patchwork. It shows the history. That lean to shows the history of something that somebody has done in more recent times than the original cottage. My extension proposal does the same. It adds to character, variety, development, and history. This is a modest extension with the support of the planning officer, support of the conservation officer. 
I think Thorn and Parish Council are a wonderful parish and they've done nothing more than support the views of the local people, which is what they are meant to do. And I respect that. And I understand the romance of such properties, I do. One of my favourite things when we walk around villages like Thornham is seeing the historic old gables of brick or chalk built over again later on. And you can still see the history of the building. It's not covered up. It's not pastiche. It's something honest and of its time. Thank you ever so much. Thank you very much. Um, anything to add, Hannah, please? Because obviously we mentioned, I did hear the first speaker speak about the these properties into two. Is that correct? Or I mean, uh, yeah, um, that um, has been alluded by third party objections. However, um, you, you'll note from page 18 that um, this is not um, for, for the conversion, it's simply for extensions. And uh, the conversion of the property into two would require planning permission in its own right. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Right, members, those wishing to speak, please. Um, Councillor Hudson, Parish, Diwali, Councillor Lawton, did you? Oh. Right, Councillor Hudson. Thank you, Chair. I went down to see this cottage yesterday. I thought, let's have a look at what we're looking at. And um, I thought it was very pleasing to the eye as it was. It sits nicely in the road. By adding a two floor extension to the left of the house and increase, well, the, the, just some twiddles I think there is on the right hand side. Um, it's going to make it overbearing. It's not a cottage. It's going to be a large house. It's, it's going to completely lose any suggestion that it's a cottage. It, it's an old house. It's an old pair of cottages. And I think the idea of that two story extension is not good. You can just get one car at the side of it. And it's going to be even tighter if you've got that extension there. You can't get round the back of the house with a car. Well, I can't. Uh, but you can just get one car at the side of it. So there's only parking for one car. Um, they've got to park somewhere else. So there's, there's nowhere else you can put a car. And they, it is, yes, it's going to absolutely alter the whole village scene, street scene. It is going to make a pair of cottages that have been knocked into one an abomination of a house and totally out of character with the whole area. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Councillor Parish. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, two things, really. The, what Councillor Hudson just alluded to, um, I'll take as read, and the opinions of the uh, Parish Council and the applicants differ in the uh, impact of the uh, change in, in style or look of this property. Um, the Parish Council um, allude to their neighbourhood plan and they think that it uh, contravenes their neighbourhood plan. And I'm a great believer in neighbourhood plans because they take so long uh, to produce and they are um, as a result of the decision by the local uh, population as to what they desire. However, the other issue is um, parking. Um, It'd be naive to think that this property isn't really two properties because there are, um, as a, a letter says to the um, planning portal, um, this is designed as a twin holiday let. There's two living dining rooms downstairs, there's a separate staircase to upper floors for either side of the building. There's lockable link doors for the first and second floor. So it could be let as a, as a, a whole building or it could be divided into two very simply um, into two. Um, and how you would know whether that was being done when the place was less, I don't know. But that comes down to um, car parking, doesn't it? At the moment, there's two car parking spaces and there's um, dispute as to whether you can get two cars um, on the property. Some people say you can't. Um, and if it's not on the property, it will have to be on the roadside or on the land opposite the cottage, which is in the AOMB. Um, if it's let as two properties, uh, there could be three or four cars. So where do they go? So yes, there's the issue of what this 
thing looks like uh, if, if it goes ahead, whether it's an impact on the um, street scene, on the uh, views and, and so on, and, that, and that's debatable. I notice the conservation officer thinks there isn't, but the conservation officer is one person and the parish council are several people. So um, you have to weigh what the opinions are between these two groups. But um, the parking, I just cannot see how the, the, how the parking works. So if officers can uh, explain that a bit better, that'd be, I'd be grateful. Thank you. Right, Hannah, would you like to just come back, please? Thank you, Chairman. I mean, I think we must remember what this development is, and the development is for a, an extension, but actually that extension serves uh, an on-seat bathroom and, uh, and utility area at ground floor and extra WC. So it's not increasing the parking as a result of this um, uh, you know, proposed development. Uh, in fact, in terms of the number of bedrooms, it's, you know, remains as a status quo. And you can see, obviously, the parking um, area here. Uh, there is no objection from the county council from a parking point of view. Um, so, you know, uh, in this regard, I can't support, um, obviously, those comments with regard to uh, lack of parking. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Dewey. Thank you, Chair. Um, we've mentioned the, it's in the AONB. Um, we, I'm not sure whether it's been mentioned, it's in the conservation area. Uh, it is an important view in uh, the neighbourhood plan. So it's, I, I'm not sure the age of the um, lean-to structures, uh, but I don't think that matters. They're there and they balance the view of the cottage, which is a mid-17 cottage. So I'm a little bit um, bemused how um, the looking at the um, amended scheme, how this is balanced. It's not. It's unbalanced. Um, so I, I think you know which direction I should be going. Thank you. Right. Anybody? All oh, right, Councillor Morley. Hi. Oops. I'm sorry, you've got a mic on, uh, Thank you, Chair. I too uh, popped uh, across to to have a look at this. I too popped across to have a look at this. And there is no doubt, and I've got my own pictures if anybody wants to see them. There's no doubt that I do not agree with the conclusion uh, of the officers here, where he said the proposed development by virtue of its balanced appearance. Well, it won't be balanced. It'll be a bit lopsided. Uh, and the subservient nature. Well, it, it won't be a subservient nature. It'll be a greater nature and it won't fit in. And if anything, waders next to it shouldn't have been approved. But there's no doubt in my, in my mind that one is parking is very limited. You could squeeze two cars in there, but you won't be able to open the doors. Um, certainly as SUVs, if they come up on for holiday people, full of, full of dogs and uh, bicycles and everything. And uh, I, I do think it's just a step too far. Admittedly, what the agent said was true. These extensions on the side, you can see have been built almost uh, by a, a local, somebody who may live there, somebody who probably was not a, a, a bricklayer. Uh, however, they are, they are quite sweet and they're in balance. And uh, there are signs that the parking is across the road. Um, the, the, where, where you can see where the cars are cut in uh, to, the, to the marsh opposite. So overall, I support the village. I've gone through their neighbourhood plan. Uh, this doesn't, doesn't fit with their, uh, uh, the, the character that they want for sustained tourism. And, I, and, I, and I would, I'm going to vote against it. Thank you. Castle Long? Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, this is one of those, well, on the face of it, would seem a simple extension. But when you start looking at the detail of it, obviously nothing's ever simple, is it? And uh, I'm just sit wondering, you know, this is classed as an important property within the conservation area. Has there ever been an application for it stroke them to be specifically listed? Um, obviously, we've got nearby AONB, and that's about natural beauty. It's not about the built vernacular, but it's about natural beauty and the built um, form of properties obviously has a bearing on what people perceive as beautiful, beautiful within the AONB. It's a very modest extension, and the original drawings that we saw for the original scheme really did not suit the cottage, in my opinion. That is my opinion. Somebody else might think it, it did. 
Um, this is slightly better, but it's slightly better on, you know, I think the uh, impact that it has. And I think if this has ever been looked to be a listed property in its own right, then I would just say that this totally was out of character with it being a listed property. As an extension in a, in a conservation area uh, for a not specifically listed property, I would think the officers are probably just slightly on the uh, right side with the approval, but it's a very close call. Right. So I would like that, it, you know, knowledge from the That's conservation true. officer as to whether there has ever been an attempt <laughs> for it to be listed. Thank you. Thank you. Not aware of that. Not aware of it. Castle Lawson. Uh, I completely agree with the, all of the speakers this morning um, who were objecting to it. Because as I regularly go around there and it is a nice cottage. The whole area is nice. Um, so I should be voted against it. Right. Has anybody making any other recommendations to what's down on the recommendation at the moment, Councillor Hudson? <laughs> I just wanted to point out that we did have a quick second look at slide 11. And that is the side view of the cottage uh, where there. Yes. Now, where are you going to get two cars in there? Sorry, Chairman. Don't, don't forget, obviously, this extension here will be um, reduced. So it's 2.2 metres from effectively this wall. At the moment, this is 2.5. So they're reducing it by um, a foot, and then obviously it will go up here. And then the two cars will be here and here, which is uh, just... So there'll be one um, behind the wall here. Obviously, th all this is parking area here. So one here and then one adjacent to it, as shown on the, uh, on the plans. Could you tell me what sort of cars they were using? Thank you. Yes. Sorry, but, you know, some of us have bigger ones, some of us have a mini. Which one is it? Sorry. Just from the mind, it sort of came out. Sorry. Just on parking, we can't shouldn't forget this will make the situation better than it is now. And this is, there's no extra bedrooms here. So I, I, in terms of, you've got to remember that. This is just a bathroom. Mm. And you're going to have a slightly wider area for, for parking overall. So I'll just bear that in mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if you can open the door. Well, anyway, members, my question to you was, at the moment, the recommend on, on the table is approved. Is anybody making a counter recommendation, please? No? Well, then I'm going to take it then that the recommendation is approved and you'll vote on approval. Okay? Right, Cathy, could you take the vote, please? There's nothing to add, is there, Hannah? No, thank you. Don't. Right, the recommendation is approved. Councillor Vaughan. Against. Councillor Bauer. For. Councillor Buff. Against. Councillor Holmes. For. Councillor Howland. Against. Councillor Hudson. Against. Councillor Lawton. Against. Councillor Manning. For. Councillor Knockholds. For. Councillor Parrish. Against. Councillor Spiking. For. Councillor Tyler. For. Councillor Diwali. Against. Councillor Whitby. For. Councillor Rose. Councillor Morley. Against. And Councillor Long. Close one, but four. Eight. All oh, right. <laughs> Yes. In which case, I'm going to be consistent, members, because it's 8A and I voted for, I haven't heard anything different to alter my mind, I will be approving this application. Thank you. Right, we now move on to Pentley. There's late correspondence and a speaker. And this is outline application for new warehousing, new dwelling house, a wildlife and tourism lake, the holiday lodges, etc. A major development, and the recommendation here is refused. Hannah. Lorna, oh, Lorna. Look, Lorna's got COVID, so she's doing it from home. She might not be there. Lorna, um, we can't hear you if you are talking.
Have we got a plan B? Plan B will be made. Right, off we go. I'm not wasting time. <laughs> Lorna, can you stop sharing, please? And I'll, I'll do the presentation. Thank you. Right, thank you, Chairman. So this is um, Oakland Gardens Main Road, Pentney. Um, some members, historic members, will have seen uh, this site uh, before in various different guises with regard to the um, the build, the the sorry, the um, uh, industrial building um, and the properties to the southeast, which is in the blue line identified down here, which were considered um, some time ago. Uh, now. So the current proposal is outline application for new warehousing, a new dwelling house um, to support the wildlife and tourism lake with holiday lodges, nature reserve and associated accesses and facilities, and the installation of a new sluice gate to assist and ease flooding in Pentney. Um, so just to get your bearings, uh, the A47 is, is this line um, here. Um, the entrance to the site is to the, um, the east um, of West Bilney. Uh, with the Narva Junction um, off down the bottom um, here. Uh, and the, the existing access would serve both the, um, the warehousing of the existing business and the proposed holiday lakes, um, sorry, holiday lodges and lake uh, here. Uh, and then that's the, the red line um, that shows as existing at the moment. Uh, now here you're looking um, back towards the entrance to the A47, which you can just see that car um, uh, over the way there and the one at the front. Let me just minimise that because I can't see that car. There we go. Uh, and again, that's the entrance onto the A47 County Wildlife Site on your right-hand side here by the pylons. Uh, and then you're looking uh, back towards the access again with the neighbouring property, A47 um, over here. And the new proposed track towards holiday use would be off to the right. So it would come through, cut through this area here. Uh, and again, the access would come across here. With it. That's the County Law Wildlife Site opposite. Uh, Semi-detached semi -attached units um, to the north, so neighbouring properties. And then into the existing storage business, as you can see here, which is related to um, garden products from my recollection. Um, these buildings um, would be removed in favour of uh, the new proposed warehousing, which would be effectively in this area uh, here where you've got this temporary building at the moment. And then the um, effectively the, the, um, the storage area now for, from having a conversation with the applicant, these, these units are used for storage purposes at the moment. So then you've got the um, county wildlife site off to the left. So this, uh, this channel here is being dug to uh, alleviate um, uh, some of the suggested uh, flooding issues as identified by uh, the applicant, and then you've got your storage pan here off to the right hand side. And then again, here's your ditch again, and then a sluice would be located in this area, which is described in the um, uh, description of the application. And then you're looking back towards that storage area here. There's some bums here, which would be relocated further um, to this area, as identified by my little red thingy. Uh, cursor thing there. Again, you can see that. So there's your temporary building. This um, bund would be re relocated in this area and the, uh, the new storage building would be located in here. And then the lakes area would extend towards this tree-lined uh, boundary here. And then further down here, so effectively the tree-lined um, uh, boundary runs right the way back to uh, those bunds as shown. Uh, and then, um, the, um, as I referred to in, originally, the applicant had consent for three houses in the bottom here, which you can just about see a caravan, which the applicant's father is living in at the moment, down the bottom here. And then, again, the, the boundary for the holiday lakes. 
And again, around that, so they're actually looking at the, um, the west and southwest boundaries. And that's it on the presentation. Uh, you'll note that there is some late correspondence, uh, some third party correspondence, as that on page one of late reps. Um, and that is it from that point of view. The application has been recommended for uh, refusal. And it's uh, board, board planning committee um, by business director. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. To have Lee Ward, please. You have what's it uh, five minutes on this one to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, Councillors. My name is Lee. Me and my family have been running our business for nearly 15 years since moving the business to Pentney on a property my dad owned. We are an online horticultural supplier, sending gardening supplies nationwide to commercial growers, schools, allotments, and charities, as well as home gardeners. We operate from a barn and many containers and lorry units full of stock because we need more warehousing. We started on a new warehouse, but Brexit and COVID caused big problems for us in many areas of the business, causing work to stop. By the time we recovered by expanding, we realised it wouldn't be big enough. Things have not gone to plan, but neither has the economy, which has directly impacted us. We do not want to relocate as it's not cost effective and we absolutely love the area. Our location on the A47 is perfect for deliveries and collections with zero impact on the village. We have grown despite many challenges. We have provided employment and invested into our infrastructure, installing electric, a sewage treatment plant and super fast broadband, allowing access to more online marketplaces and to process more orders. This application gives us the space we need to grow helps fund the build and to diversify our income, allowing growth and to have long-term stability during future economic ups and downs and to secure our business in Pentney for generations to come. We can operate to our full potential in the UK and expand into overseas markets, creating up to 20 jobs in different areas, skilled and unskilled, with priority given to local applicants. It enables me and my wife to move to Norfolk to save time and focus more on the business, my dad and business partner does have two building plots on Pentley Lane and has become very ill over the last few years and has not been able to fund them. But they are unsuitable for a warden's location because they are a quarter of a mile away from the proposed cabins. The location of the warden's home is secured by design near the cabins and lake for safety and security. As one of the cabins is for disabled and medically deserving guests, my wife and I will be advanced first aid trained have water life saving skills and a defibrillator will be also on site. Having a visual location on the guests enables a fast response time, which could make all the difference in an emergency. The location is vital to ensure total care and safety of guests at all times. It will also provide extra security to our site, which has suffered theft and vandalism twice in recent years. This application enables flood and drought measures for the village. The parish council asked us for help following extreme rainfall a few years ago which flooded local business and residential properties and caused the first ever house in Pentley to flood inside. We dug a new ditch, which helped, but our plan goes much further and enables a long-term solution for future floods with further ditches, holding pond, and an automated sluice gate, controlling the level of the water in the area, which will benefit local properties and the neighboring CWS. There are concerns about the CWS, but we will have no impact on the site. We are adding to the wildlife massively, planting hundreds of trees and have measures for minimal noise and light pollution. The CWS runs along the A47, exposed to thousands of vehicles passing day and night. Our shielded proposal will not have a negative impact, only positives creating extra wildlife corridors. The Environment Agency, Natural England and the Drainage Board are all happy with our proposal to handle surface and foul water by treating it on site before discharging. Only treated water will enter the lake and ditches. A hydrologist has confirmed we will have no adverse impact on the SSI River Nar, satisfying concerns from the Wildlife Trust, who would like to see a full ecological report. The full report has been commissioned with a local company and the first of 23 surveys between now and October have already begun, which will be completed before submitting a full application. This extensive survey is so we can adapt our wilding plan to the best potential. 
This is not just a business to us. This is our passion, where we spend most of our time, seven days a week, growing the business we love and enjoying the environment we are so privileged to work in. We have worked hard to engage with the residents and the parish council to make this application work for everyone, which is why no one who actually lives in Pentney has objected. Six years ago, this committee gave us plan and permission to expand against recommendation, and you did tell me not to waste the opportunity, and we have not. Things may have not gone totally to plan, but we have worked very hard in the last six years. We have doubled the workforce and quadrupled our turnover. I'm asking you to please believe in us again and give us this opportunity to grow our business, provide for the local community, create jobs, and continue our passion for rural enterprise. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Hannah, Hannah have you got any further comments to make to what Mr. Ward has said? Right. Anyone wishing to speak, Councillor Long? Oh, well, Madam Chairman, a couple of things comes to my mind when I see an application like this. Where else would that kind of business locate to? Where else could it be? Oh, that's just difficult. Is there already character and form of holiday lodges and things in the vicinity? Oh, yes, there is. Um, <laughs> just a little bit further down the 47 on the opposite side of the road. So, you know, it's, it's within the area that that sort of thing is already happening. So then it comes to things like the biodiversity. And I can't see specifically mentioned within the report the amount of biodiversity net gain. We just heard from the speaker that there will be additional planting and, and so on, screening. And of course, screening is with trees and so on. That creates, you know, that creates green corridors for the movement of, of, of species and so on probably enhancing the county wildlife science. So again, you know, that's uh, uh, something that I think needs to be factored into the, the, the mix of all of this. All that it seems to me that hasn't happened, that probably should have happened, is we should have been a little bit further forward with the ecological surveys that need to be done to not impact the county wildlife science. And once you've done something and started it, it's very hard then to establish how or whether or not you are impacting on uh, wildlife. <clears throat> but assuming that we know what best practice would be, is it possible that if this was recommended for approval, let's say, that there could be conditioned that that work was carried out and then as the work progressed, it would, uh, it would, it would, it would happen in a, uh, an appropriate manner so as not to impact the wildlife and to allow a local business to its uh, ability to expand. Uh, because if that is the case, then I for one will be proposing that we approve this with the appropriate conditions, Madam Chair. Yeah, we're in a dilemma here today because a lot of the information is slightly premature that we're dealing with. If all of this was topped and tailed, like with the reports and everything, we'd have a better balanced view in order to which to know to wait to take this way forward. I'm minded to ask members to come away from this and defer it until we have the full information. Because this young man is working hard, he's given jobs, you know, he's the future of things. We don't want to detract from his aims and aspirations, but on the other hand, we have to get it right. So I'm asking, do I have a seconder for a deferral? Can I take the vote then for deferral, please, Cathy? All right? Right. Councillor Bowen. Four. Councillor Bower. Four. Councillor Burke. Four. Councillor Holmes. Four. Councillor Howland. Four. Councillor Hudson. Four. Councillor Lawton. Four. Councillor Manning. Four. Councillor Knuckles. Four. Councillor Parrish. Four. Councillor Spiking. Four. Councillor Tyler. Four. Councillor DeWally. Four. Councillor Whitby. Four. Councillor Rose. Four. Councillor Morley. This seems a good case to agree, but four. And Councillor Long. Yeah, I would have I would have proposed that we accepted it now with a condition, but if, if deferral is the answer, I have to agree. Everybody yeah. else has said deferral. Yeah. So. Well, we have to get it right, and we can get it right, I'm sure, with the right bit more work, a bit more discussion, but hopefully a better. Separately, result. Chairman, I did ask a point about 
level of biodiversity net gain, which yes. I understand is now a requirement. Well, how soon, how far away from, are we from that, please? Next November, November this year. Oh, I can't have on that one, Brian. Yeah, well, anyway, by the time that probably comes back, it might be then, who knows. Right, we'll now move on to page 44, which is Brancaster. There's a speaker and late correspondence. It's for the conversion of an existing barn into residential dwelling and its recommended reviews. Thank you, Chairman. Speak up. This application is for the conversion of an existing barn to a residential dwelling in the outskirts of Brancaster State. That's the existing, is it Dutch barn um, with the curved roof and various extensions previously. And then these are the proposed plans. You can see there's um, extensions to either side, largely on the footprint of the. Could you talk near me to mic, please? Because we Could can't hear you. And don't move your head when you're talking. <laughs> Sorry, I know it's easy to say, but they can't hear you. Sorry. Um, so this is the proposed plans showing extensions either side of the main barn. Um, they're modern extensions with seed and roofs. Um, the carport to one side and a raised terrace to the other. And then these are the existing photos. That's the front elevation onto Common Lane. That's the north elevation. And the south. And then these are views across the fields to the west. <clears throat> That's the view from, so the barn is to the right. That's the view south along Common Lane. And then this is the view, this is the last house in Brancaster Stave. And then that's mm -hmm. the barn you can see just to the left of this arrow. The application is recommended for refusal. It's been brought into committee after being called in by Councillor Lawton. Uh, the key issues are on page 44 of your agendas. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Could we have Jane Scott Moncrief please to speak? We have three minutes to speak, all right. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jane. My husband Robert and I are the applicants. I'm Norfolk born and bred. My family has lived here since the 1850s and we live in Cornham. The barn is just over 100 metres from the nearest house. These hay barns are rare in East Anglia, and central government is encouraging local authorities to preserve this type of building. The conservation architect says this barn is of recognised historical type. It shows the development and scale of farming in the past, and it should be classed as a non-designated heritage asset. Next, please. We'd like to convert the barn into a three-bedroom home with two offices. Robert and I both work from home. It will be our permanent home and absolutely not a second home. We believe the plans for this barn add significant design and character to the village and it would blend well into the landscape. I work as a garden designer and would like to create a natural ecological space on this derelict plot. My growing business currently employs about 20 local subcontractors. Next, please. The landscaping plans are based on the Norfolk Coast Partnership and Norfolk Wildlife Trust Joint Initiative on Nature Recovery. The planting will be native species, pollinator friendly shrubs and perennials. Because of climate change, I'd like to have some test beds for plant trials of drought tolerant planting. The NCP officer says these plans will deliver a positive impact on the biodiversity of the site. Next, please. Other LPAs have regularly granted permission for Dutch barns to be converted in AONBs across the country. Five counties are represented here, including North Norfolk. Next, please. The water tower at Castleacre is an example of exciting new Norfolk architecture. It repurposed an old building and has won many awards. Next, please. You have granted planning permission in our AONB for several barns outside village development boundaries near Sedgeford, Burnham Thorpe, Brancaster Stave, Burnham Market, and there is Warren, just 10 miles from our barn. Next, please. We're keen to retain the architectural integrity of this piece of farming history, and in line with government policy, we will build sustainably, improve biodiversity, and respect the dark skies. 
Our plans are popular with the village and the residents we have consulted all feel it would improve the look of the area. We believe our proposals adhere to the NPPF, Policy CA Associates and the Brankston Neighbourhood Plan. There is no objection from the official consultees, including Natural England, Parish Council, Environment and Highways. We have 26 local people who have written in support so far. The point is that we're trying to improve the AOMB. It will look better for the village overall. It will improve biodiversity and ecology and enhance the landscape. Surely this would be better than having a derelict building on the edge of the village. So we're asking you to please approve this application today. Thank you. Thank you. Anything to add, please? Lucy? Nothing at this stage, thank you. Thank you. Right, members, those wishing to speak. Councillor Lawton, you called this in? Yeah. Mike, yeah. 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 can we have the mic on, please? Sorry, Bob. Do you want to start again? Yeah. In the supporting statement, the bar is standing empty having been a builder's yard for some 20 odd years. And some deterioration of the area since it became empty has started. The barn is a commercial use, is proving to be unviable. Conversion to domestic use is the only best course to take. As a statement that it is outside the development area, is inconsistent as there are several conversions in the area that are outside the development area. Two in particular are next to Brancaster State. Burnham Deep Bell, Marsh Barn is a good quarter of a mile outside any development area. And incidentally, is right next to the marsh area. The other is the cart shed a good mile outside any development area and nowhere near any other buildings in the middle of agricultural land. <coughs> we're, both, uh, we're both passed for domestic use in recent years by this very planning authority. I do think that giving permission for the big barn for domestic use would enhance the area. <coughs> and remember, this is going to be lived in permanently and not the second or holiday home. And of course, importantly, will not deteriorate in the future. Thank you. Councillor Bone. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I quite like it. I, I, I think it's, a, it's an improvement. It goes towards preserving the fabric of the, the barn and keeping it. And I think it's um, it's softened and what's proposed is actually going to make it sit better in the landscape than it currently does. There's not too much uh, overuse of, of, of glazed panels. Um, so, so it's considerate in, in that. And um, I, th I think it's a good use of converting that barn and, and um, and has some architectural merit. So I, 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 I go against the recommendation and I'd like to approve it. Are you making a proposal, Councillor Bone, to approve? Yeah, I propose to approve. Right, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Let me just write my, I got to get my details right in here. I am now asking for a seconder. So, right, Bauer. Now I'd like your planning reasons, please. Um, I believe it, it, it's going to enhance the uh, natural beauty of the area and it uh, goes towards the conservation of a uh, historic um, building. We're going to just come back on that because obviously I've got to get my planning reasons right. Also, the fact that they have had an ecological survey done which supports biodiversity as well as providing a home. Carry on, Stuart. Yeah, I mean, effectively, that's the decision. That that is—is is this a barn or a building that you want to um, retain? Obviously, there'll be an impact as well of 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 it. But but in terms of the reason put forward specifically, it would be CSO six, which allows conversion of of buildings, rural buildings, uh, where it makes a positive contribution to the landscape. 
Um, so effectively, that's what you're... Uh, yeah. you're Are you happy with set. that proposal, what's been suggested? Because yeah. we, we don't want to go around the houses to get a result. Council Councillor... Yeah, no, I'm asking you, first of all. Councillor Bauer, mm -hmm. are you happy with that? I'm happy with that, because I think it, with the environmental um, uh, plans as well. Yeah, right. I've now got Councillor Long next before you, Councillor Dr. Yeah. I should take you all in order, but don't worry. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah. Um, I, I mentioned on the application previously, you can't enhance the AONB with the built vernacular, but you can detract from it. Well, of course, if this barn gradually goes into rack and ruin yeah. and has been a builder's yard and, and you know, and all, then it is detracting from the AONB with it, within which it sits. Now, if it's done as per the plans we've seen and the garden planting is put in place and so on, that to me will actually, whilst you can't enhance the natural beauty, at least you will take away some of the detraction that is there from the fact that the barn is currently there and, and is becoming, you know, more dilapidated as the years go by. And we know, we know all buildings, if they're not used, not, you know, for the purpose that they were intended, become dilapidated and then they become a blot on the on the landscape. And I think improving this and doing this keeping the sort of character of the barn there so it's obvious what it wasn't once was, is probably the right thing to do. The only thing that sort of sits within all of this is, is for me, you know, that jars with, with that thinking, is the fact that the Norfolk Coast Partnership, um, who I, you know, was involved with for many years as chairman and um, as, a, as a member of, um, have come up with the comments that they have. Um, and that surprises me, but I do think there may have been a change of personnel there um, from the previous consistency that we were that we've seen from their planning report. So I tend to support those that are saying it ought to be approved with the appropriate conditions. Yeah. Because our, my view is it does provide a positive contribution to our housing stock. We don't want everything prescriptive, that it's just this one, a house, a cottage. Let's have something as well, because it is out in the countryside, and I feel it has made a positive contribution. I've now got Councillor Diwali. Thank you, Chair. Um, and just one question I have in terms of the recommendation. Um, there is no mention of paragraph 176 in the National Planning Policy Framework, which says great weight could be given to conserving and enhancing landscape and scenic beauty in national parks, the broad areas, sorry, the broads and areas of outstanding natural beauty, which have the highest status of protection in relation to these issues. Now, um, I... Looking at the plans, I can see a marginal improvement in visual appearance, but it's not enough for me to um, believe that it is enhancing the landscape. Um, and I'm in agreement with uh, the uh, with the Norfolk Coast Partnership and their objection. But the question is for me that this is a very significant amount of weight which, that should be given to this decision, because that's what it says in the National Planning Policy Framework. So if you don't agree that it enhances the landscape, you should, as far as I can see, be voting against this. Thank you. Right, Councillor Knuckles. Th thank you. I think this is a fine example of, of farming a farming asset in, in Norfolk, which we are well known for. And I, I firmly believe these buildings should remain and be used, whether it's for housing or for farming. But one condition I think is quite important is the actual external lighting in the evening, because we are known for dark skies in this area. Yeah. And we have many visitors to um, view our dark skies. So I do think that should be in one of the conditions. When at the end of this, if the I'm not taking it for granted, if we do recommend approval, well, then conditions will be agreed with the chair and vice chair, and they are one of the things that will be taken note of that we do respect the dark skies out there. Yes. And now I've got Councillor Morley. Uh, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to uh, confirm that uh, I support the build the conversion of this uh, barn. There are too many buildings in our area around there which is deteriorating. Uh, therefore, developing this site will make a country positive contribution to the landscape in my view and it won't be a deterioration and therefore I support it and overall it won't change the character of the area in fact 
by by having people uh, living in that area in, in that site, it will enhance the area. So I'm I'm, I'm for it. Thank you, uh, Councillor Bob. Next. Thank you. Um, I'm fully in favour of this. Uh, it's not a great Tudor barn to be revered. It uh, shows the progression through the years of agricultural architecture. And to save it, albeit turning it into something that the people are living in, is, I, uh, to my mind, the, the best thing you can do. I don't know if some, some people, I, I watched recently a programme on Channel 5 where they developed a similarly unattractive barn into something that was quite impressive. It didn't become a thing of great beauty, but it was certainly something you could walk past and say, oh, that's a good job done there. And I think this will be much the same sort of thing at the end of the day. Thank you. Anything else to add, please, Lucy or Stuart? Do you want to come back with the planning reasons so we can just tell them? Yeah, I, I mean, I did a couple of points. Obviously, the planning them. reasons that have been talked about are in accordance with CSO 6, Councillor Bone. Um, in terms of conversion, it's a, a nice building, effectively Dutch barn and retaining it. I would uh, yeah, obviously you need to consider the impact on the A1B as well. That was a point that was that was raised, uh, and that is uh, that is a good one. It's a, for me, it's quite a balanced one. This it's either you like you know, the principle of conversion, but you do have to consider how it's going to look in the landscape and the rise, you know, the, 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 the change that will happen because of the garden and the, the curtilage and lights, and you know, it, it will it will change the character of it. But, but you could it's the view maybe that that might be for the better. So that that's that's the the, the view that you'll have to uh, come to when you when you're considering this. Um, but the planning reasons at the moment from forward are certainly um, yeah CSL six and it's a positive contribution it makes to the to, to the area of the landscape yeah. and conditions to be agreed by chair and vice chair it would, yeah that's, that's, yeah because the recommendation is unchanging to approve so I need to have that in now to uh, vote on yeah at the moment yeah the recommendation is approved by Councillor Bowen obviously seconded by yeah, here and was. Um, in terms of conditions, yes, that will be chairman, chairman advice. If it is approved, I would yeah. I would recommend removing permit development rights, uh, certainly for outbuildings, and because you've, yeah. you've got potentially quite a big area of land with it. Yeah, well, quite. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Everybody, yeah, right. Well, anyway, we take it now to the vote, please, Kathy. We are recommending for approval. That's what you voted with conditions to be agreed, and PD rights taken, and dark skies, and all the other bits and pieces that you have to put in. Right. Okay, Cathy. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Bauer. Uh, Councillor Bone, sorry. Oh. Councillor Bauer. Four. Oh. Councillor Bud. Four. Councillor Holmes. Four. Councillor Howland. Four. Councillor Hudson. Four. Councillor Lawton. Four. Councillor Manning. Four. Councillor Knuckle. Four. Councillor Parrish. Four. Councillor Spiking. Four. Councillor Tyler. Four. Councillor Dewally. Again. Councillor Whitby. Four. Councillor Rose. Four. Councillor Morley. Four. And Councillor Long. Four as well. So you have your approval. Now, members, I'm going to stop now until quarter two for a comfort break, please. And please remind members we're in recess. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Right, members, I'm going to start again the meeting, please, on page 58, which is Heacham. We have speakers who will be on Zoom. It's for a first floor extension, a full application, and the recommendation is approved. Thank you, Jim. I'm just waiting for the whoever's in charge of the... Yep. There we go. Right. All right, thank you, Chairman. This is a first floor extension at the Bolt Hole 51A South Beach, um, Heacham. Uh, this is the application site on the western side um, of uh, South Beach. Uh, this is the existing uh, unit. It's a caravan type um, structure, uh, sorry, dwelling, um, you know, modest um, in its form with a raised decking, as you can see here. And the proposal is to uh, raise it. Um, so it has a first floor accommodation, still the same amount of bedrooms as, as members will have noted in, in the report, but to give that extra bit of room within um, the building itself and to keep the raised decking um, area, as you can see. Uh, elevational changes, obviously with the increase uh, in height with the two windows uh, and the uh, larger Juliet balcony, as you can see. Um, here in that balcony, sorry, not Juliet balcony, as you can see on the rear elevation, which is to the, the west. Um, you also note from the report that it has been amended to re remove some of the glazing. So glazing um, at the ground floor level is, is still kind of full width-ish, but um, originally the proposal was to have a full width glaze element here, and that has been reduced. Uh, again, showing you that two bedrooms um, are still proposed. So there's no increase in the habitable level of accommodation in accordance with DM18 uh, of, of the local plan. And um, here you have it, a brick built structure, uh, as you can see. Um, there is um, uh, different types of property alongside. Members will also recall that we've recently dealt with uh, an application for an increase um, to first floor um, in, in this area further to the south, I think, from, from this site. Again, to the um, uh, to the right, the relationship with that property to the right and the sea wall um, beyond. And again, relationship to the, the left, the southernmost dwelling. And um, looking east from the, the sea wall back um, towards South Beach. And obviously the view of the sea. Uh, issues are outlined on page uh, 58 of the agenda pages. Uh, it is recommended um, for approval. Now there is a, we're on page 58, page 62. Uh, there is a, a correction and, and should on page 62 uh, should read in the second sentence of the fifth paragraph form character, the centre should read at first floor, two windows are proposed, one matching the existing window at ground floor and one of a slightly reduced width. And there is an amended condition to, uh, and quite rightly, the third party is correct. There was a very minor discrepancy, which has been clarified and hence the amended uh, condition. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Could I have Tracy Raby on Zoom, please? You can indeed. Uh, good morning. I'm attending today to represent the Heacham Neighbourhood Planning Group. This application conflicts with the Heacham Neighbourhood Plan, which was developed after extensive consultation with residents and passed on referendum in June 2022, and with the Borough Council Site Development Management Policies Plan, sections DM18 and 11. DM18, um, this section of the coastline is considered to be at very high risk from coastal flooding, and the DM18 Coastal Flood Risk Hazard Zone, Hunts, Lanterns, Dursingham, seeks to prevent any inappropriate development in this area. The requirements of this poly policy are fully supported in Policy 17 of the Heacham Neighbourhood Plan. The application also does not comply with the number of um, criterion contained in Policy 5 of the Neighbourhood Plan design principles namely preserve and where practicable enhance the village of Heacham, be sensitive to its surrounding and demonstrate that it minimises adverse impacts on neighbouring residences and recognise and reinforce the character of the local area in relation to height, scale, spacing, layout, orientation, design and materials of neighbouring buildings. 
This application for a first floor extension is completely out of keeping with other properties, as you can see on either side, both of which will be dwarfed by this proposed extension, and it is clearly detrimental to the character and setting of South Beach. Heach and South Beach is in the, in the Wash National Nature Reserve and also an area of outstanding natural beauty. The rear elevation of the property overlooking the beach has an excessive use of glass, even with the reduction proposed, which will increase light pollution and be detrimental to bird life with the hazards of reflection, etc. Heacham South and North Beaches are not like the affluent neighbourhood of Paul Dorset on the south coast of England, known for its high property prices, but recent planning applications are sadly moving it in this direction. South Beach is quieter than its sibling to the north, being rugged and empty, great for dog walking and fishing. The beach is backed by heathland, marshes and the river, or right with the backdrop of caravan parks behind the dunes. During the summer months, Heacham South Beach is home to bird nest on the beach and people are asked to ensure dogs are kept on leads and away from cordon nesting areas. This property will be, I'm assuming, a holiday home and will just increase the number of people there. Sadly, this application, if approved, along with the previous ap uh, approval um, referenced a moment ago, in the view of Heacham residents, uh, these um, developments are intrinsically changing the character and setting of this area within the Wash Nature Reserve. And I would urge councillors to support the neighbourhood plan and actually turn down this application. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like Helen Morris to answer. Thank you. Good morning. Can you hear me OK? Yes, thanks, Helen. OK, good morning, members and officers. I would first like to thank the committee for the opportunity to speak in support of this application on behalf of the applicant and also thank the case officer for his careful consideration of the proposal and his detailed recommendation to approve. As advised in the submitting supporting statement, the owners of the bolt hole have been visiting this part of Heacham for many years and purchased the property in 2021 to become their family holiday home. The modest first floor extension proposed has been carefully designed to ensure it meets all the requirements of the policies of the core strategy, the site allocations and development management policies plan and the Heacham neighbourhood plan. No additional habitable rooms are proposed, but instead the improvements sought merely seek to extend what is already there to give extra space for a young family wishing to spend their holidays in Heacham. Additionally, by moving the two existing bedrooms upstairs, this will provide safer refuge for the family going forwards in this flood risk area. In order to comply with policy DM18 of the site allocations and development management policies plan, any replacement dwelling in this location would have to have all habitable accommodation above ground floor level to make it, so it makes more sense that a modest proposed extension to an existing property, as in this case, should be afforded the same opportunity to provide flood risk benefits by moving existing habitable accommodation upstairs. Numerous properties along the beach have already been improved and altered in recent years as people seek to adapt their holiday homes to make them safer and usable for generations to come. As a result, there are already several two-storey properties in close proximity to the site along both south and north beaches. The character of the area is therefore very mixed, with few properties being alike in their appearance and in their materials. The modest first floor extension would therefore not appear out of keeping with existing development along the beach, particularly as it has been designed to keep the height increase as minimal as possible. In terms of neighbour impact, the concerns raised have been taken account of and carefully addressed in the case officer's report. As it can be seen within the presentation photographs, there is ample separation between the application property and the accommodation on both neighbouring sites. By keeping the height increased to a minimum and only building upwards within the existing footprint, the separation between the properties ensures there will be minimal impact on both neighbours in terms of loss of light, overshadowing and overbearing impact. Furthermore, no first floor windows to habitable rooms will be provided on either flank elevation ensuring there will be no overlooking or loss of privacy to the occupiers of the neighbouring properties either side. Given the proposed modest extension clearly complies with policies DM15 and DM18 of the site allocations plan and all policies of the Heacham neighbourhood plan, we respectfully request that members take full account of the positive recommendation of the case officer and approve this application. Thank you. 
Thank you. Anything to add? Right, members wishing to talk, please, on this one. Uh, Councillor Parrish. Long and long. Right, Councillor Parrish. Well, I won't um, go into great detail because if you listen to Miss Raby, you would have heard the references to the neighbourhood plan. Um, South Beach and North Beach in Heacham um, has uh, has been has had many planning applications over the last uh, few years, and it continues to do so. And all these applications are to make their residences um, bigger and taller. Um, original residences were, were low profile, um, tucked away, not seen easily, and certainly not seen easily from the beach. And as they get taller, so more and more uh, peep over the um, dunes and the, you, you see a row of houses basically when you walk along the beach. Um, the impact of this is to uh, it's, it's pleasant for the people who build the houses, but uh, deteriorates the quality of the uh, beach scene. Um, it also impacts on, um, or can it impact on the wildlife. The mention was made of large picture windows. And we all know that if you've got some um, glazing where there's a lot of birds about, they can just smack into it because they get confused by the reflection of them. This is a problem that, uh, in, in many locations along the coast. So officers have suggested that um, because it's not got extra bedrooms, there's no increase in um, uh, residential space for overnight sleeping and so on because there, there's no extra bedrooms. However, it is a little bit larger mm -hmm. and you don't have to have a thing designated a bedroom to make it into a bedroom. You just put a, a, a bed in there that rolls out from a settee to a bed. And logic would suggest that anything which goes bigger has got um, a more likelihood of having more uh, people in there overnight than if it goes smaller or if it stays the same. The, pro the previous application for this development site was to increase it by two bedrooms um, and to make it higher. Although the applicant now says that they don't need to have any more bedrooms because it's only for family use. Well, I would suggest that if they wanted to originally have extra two bedrooms, that need hasn't gone away. And the likelihood is that there will be more people um, living in this accommodation. And you have to recall that it's um, it's not a permanent accommodation. It can't be because it's in a in a flood area. It's a, a holiday accommodation, and holiday accommodations can be let to anybody, and you have no control over the number of people who actually stay and living them. And the more space there is, the more people can actually live in them. So I do think it still um, uh, goes against DM18, which is to prevent um, additional people uh, living in such properties. As far as the neighbourhood plan is concerned, it's, it's not just concerned with DM18, of course, it's concerned with the impact on neighbours and the neighbouring properties to this one are still low profile ones and this is going to be a tall structure in the middle. Reference has been made by the second speaker that there are other properties that have gone up to two storeys in the past and um, that was before the neighbourhood plan, of course, which came into effect um, about seven months ago in, in June 2020. Two. So what happened before shouldn't influence what happens now. You should take into account uh, those conditions in the neighbourhood plan which do refer to impacts on neighbours. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, Councillor Parrish, I've listened very carefully to what you said, but some of the things are assumptions and presumptions. We are dealing with the fact that um, there are no additional habitable rooms, that we have no additional footpath, footprint proposed. Yes, we do have a neighbourhood plan, but it is a material consideration which we have to get along with a lot of other things. Now, to me, this building's already there. So if there was a flood, which heaven forbid there isn't, but you know, you do hear rising tide, et cetera, and they are ground floor, at least if there is a first floor, there is somewhere where you could go. Not that I want to see it. And then I note that the original dwelling also includes an occupancy restriction from April to October. Well, that to me seems perfectly reasonable along that coastline, that there is plans in place. They are hopefully signed up, or if not, should be to the, uh, to the flood warnings. 
they go in and they have, and people do enjoy it. I don't think that these people, for what modest uh, extra on that first floor are asking, are going to do, be doing half of what you'll be thinking. I don't think anything of that. I'm looking at the dwelling. And to me, with the amended condition to no additional rooms and all the rest of it, I just, I just think that this is the right recommendation. Councillor Long. Madam Chairman, on the 31st of January, I attended the Minster for the memorial. Um, mm. I didn't stay for the church service, but did attend um, watching local school kids learning about the flood and learning about the history of what happened in 53. Mm. But we all know it, it, it it's flooded uh, since then, 78. Mm. And uh, there was obviously overtopping and, and damage to the defences uh, in 2012, 13, 13. Yeah. Um, so I always look at this in terms of what's better in terms of flood, the flood risk that's there. So we've got a, a condition already on the building that it's not allowed to be occupied during uh, you know the winter months, um, and it's the sh bearing in mind the variance that's there with some of the mm. properties. This is one of the shorter terms because some have nearly 11 month occupancy yeah. restriction. Yeah. And this one has a, a shorter, you know, a shorter term than that. And um, generally the highest astronomical tide of the year happens in August rather mm. than during the winter. And it's only, it's only low pressures and, and uh, movement of water within the uh, North Sea that causes the problems. So is this going to be safer as a result of what's happening? I believe it will be safer. Um, could it accommodate more people? Well, you know, if you put your bedrooms upstairs and you previously had a bungalow, then in theory, more people could sleep downstairs. Although, of course, the plans do show that there are other uh, rooms and usage that, can, that are being proposed to be put in place. And I think on the balance, and I, I you know, notwithstanding what Heacham um, uh, put within their neighbourhood plan, and I know it has to be given weight and consideration, but I think in terms of the accommodation provided, this will be a better holiday home in terms of safety than it is at the present time. And, I'll, and just on the balance of that, I would have to go with the supporting recommendation that we see. Councillor Morley. Thank you, Chair. I have to say, I totally disagree with your summing up about the, uh, the analysis of this case. Um, That's why we're here to debate it. <laughs> well, I disagree with what you said, totally. Including your weighting of the neighbourhood plan, which I find incredible, to be honest with you. I think that you, you're, you're, you're putting too low a uh, recognition on that plan, which people... Yeah. Stuart will come back on that. OK, well, in my view, you put too low a weighting on. If you walk from Heacham Holt into Huntstanton, which I do quite often, there are many changes in design along the beach there mm -hmm. and amongst the dunes. And you wonder if people that wanted to continue to come to Huntstanton, did they pick a plot out which they thought that they could extend? You can't, you're not going to be able to control the conditions on occupancy for a holiday during a holiday period. The changes in design along there as you walk along, this will create more of a blot on the landscape rather than enhance. The, the, the effect from, from C to Ken Hill, if you wish. And I don't agree with it. And I think it should stay as it is. And if, if extra bedrooms are needed, then an well, alternative dwelling should be thought. Are Thank you making you. a proposal then, Councillor Morley? A proposal? Yeah. Okay, well, I propose that we reject yeah. this application on the grounds one that's contained in the, in the neighbourhood plan. Sorry. Just, just on the neighbourhood plan, I mean, looking at looking at it, the relevant policies I see is policy three, residential extensions, and that, that talks about character of the dwelling, and is it an appropriate scale, bulk mass? So those are the kind of issues of judgment that you, you need to take into account. Obviously, the, the neighbourhood plan is part of the development plan, um, and, is, and is, is a recent part of the development plan. Um, so yeah, that, that, that as I see it is, is the relevant policy here. There is also policy five, which, which was referred to, and that's about design uh, principles. So I think the changing design is distract, detracting from, from, the, yeah. uh, from the beach and dune scene. 
And don't forget, two wrongs don't make a right. So what is it? What's happened two or three years ago uh, doesn't necessarily doesn't necessarily take precedence over what we want to decide now in the light of everything from 1953 and, and uh, to date. So. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know what else do you want me to say about. Well, I mean, you've got, so it's character and appearance that you're a jet effectively yeah, uh, yeah. in that, as, as I understand it. Is that is that correct? That you're, sorry, sorry, is that sorry, Councillor Mod? Is is, is, is are you is your objection about the appearance of the building, character, yeah. mass, and yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Mass yeah okay, yeah, yeah, that is that is red policy three of the Hitchin neighbourhood plan, uh, and obviously the, uh, DM fifteen of the, uh, the SAD MP. Right, do you have a second for that, Councillor Parish? Right. Uh, I carry on then. Oh, who's next? No, I don't think I have got anybody next, no. have we? Nobody else wishing to speak? Yeah, it, it depends on what the comment is. Is it a new statement? Right, could you put your mic on, please? I've got a question for you. Yeah. you? Um, Stuart, could you just uh, reiterate the position of a neighbourhood plan in these debates? Because um, it was alluded to that um, it's something we might have to think about, but it's uh, rather more significant than that, is it not? I said it's a material consideration, is what it, I said. I mean, it is part of the development plan, and it, it, the each neighbourhood plan, because it's been through, uh, so it's the same, it has to be considered in the same way as the same way as the local plan is, and obviously it is the most up-to-date part of the development plan. So, so yeah, it, it, it is given significant weight uh, as part of the development plan and policies in it but as i said my, my, my taking of that relevant policy is is yeah it's about judgment isn't it it's, it's whether one person thinks it's appropriate and another person thinks it's, it's not so right then at the moment we have refusal proposed by councillor morley seconded by Can councillor parish uh, you talk about the mass design and the character and appearance and plan policy three of the neighbourhood plan. Is that right, Stuart? Yeah, right. that's correct. Cathy, we are voting for refusal. So that's what we're voting for. Thank you, Councillor Bone. Stay. Councillor Bower. Against. Councillor Burb. Against. Councillor Holmes. For. Councillor Howland. Against. Councillor Hudson. Against. Councillor Lawton. Councillor Mayne. Against. Councillor Knockholds. Against. Councillor Parrish. For. Councillor Spikings. Against. Councillor Tyler. Against. Councillor Dawley. For. Councillor Whitby. Against. Councillor Rose. Four. Councillor Morley. Four. And Councillor Long. Against. Yeah, that was lost. So that refusal is lost. I now go to the main recommendation, which is to approve, included the amended condition two, which are we in favour of? Thank you. Yeah. Right, Cathy. Mm -hmm. Councillor Pone. Stay. Councillor Bower. Four. Councillor Bubb. Four. Councillor Holmes. Against. Councillor Howland. Four. Councillor Hudson. Oh. Councillor Lawton. Oh. Councillor Manning. Four. Councillor Knockholds. Four. Councillor Parrish. Yes. Councillor Spikings. Four. Councillor Tyler. Four. Councillor Diwali. Against. Councillor Whitby. Four. Councillor Rose. Absent. Councillor Morley. Against. And Councillor Long. Four. Therefore, that um, approval's been carried. Thank you. We now go on to North Beach HM. There's several speakers on this one, members. Um, it's Heacham and Samson, it's right on the border. It's a mixed-use period here, uh, holiday accommodation, etc. 
It's a full application and the recommendation is refused and there is a correction on page 75 and there is late. Right, who's doing that? Lucy, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. This application seeks full planning permission for the construction of a mixed-use holiday accommodation with Integral Coast Guard Coast Watch Tower um, at 64 North Beach in future. So this is the proposed plan. It's on Santon to the north um, and then existing dwellings along North Beach to the south. That's the proposal with separate parking for the Coast Watch um, and then the holiday accommodation to the north of the lot. This is the proposed design. So it's a modern uh, four storey dwelling if you count the raised levels at ground floor um, with seating roofs and cladding and external staircases. Um, the Coast Guard Tower is accessed by a staircase to this side. You can see that there. And then that's the upstairs on the top. And then the holiday accommodation is um, pretty much all of the rest of the floor plan. That's the application site viewed from North Beach. And then these are the existing dwellings to the south. That's the side elevation of the nearest dwelling. And then that's the view towards Hud Stanton. These are houses at South Beach Road, Hud Stanton. So they're all on a lower level than uh, where this is proposed. Um, the key issues are on page 68 of your agenda. It's recommended for refusal and it's been called in by Councillor Dark and Councillor Parrish. Um, Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Right. Are you finished then, Lucy? Are they finished? Yeah. Right. Um, Yes, Lucy Vaughan, please, first. Good morning, everybody. Firstly, I'd like to thank the planning department for its report, which I think rightly focuses on the conflict between this application and well-established policies to limit the number of people at risk from sea flooding and to prevent more coastal land from being taken up by second homes. On behalf of all the objectors from the properties most affected by this development in South Beach Road, Hunstanton, behind the development, I'd like to say that if we genuinely thought this application was going to save lives, we would not be objecting to it. But this proposal was not, in my opinion, designed to save lives. There's no evidence that the technical or practical requirements for an observatory tower are met from this particular site. Nothing that I've heard or seen to date has persuaded me that there are enough incidents in this area that can be seen from this tower to justify building it on this extremely vulnerable piece of land or that there will be sufficient people to man the tower if it is built. I do not think there's been sufficient uh, representation from the charity or the Coast Guard to date to ensure that it's going to operate as it, it is promised. Um, I also think it's ridiculous that, there, that uh, there has already been a Coast Guard tower on the cliffs of Unstanton, which has been closed and sold off for holiday homes, and now we're proposing to build another one on a sensitive stretch of coast. This is part of a pattern of recent proposals, in my opinion, where developers who have been blocked by the council's policies on second homes and flooding, are keen to develop on empty bits of land along the coast, combine their proposals with poorly thought out offers of supposed public benefit. If we continue to build along our coast at this rate, the effect on the environment and on people will be huge. Just days after the anniversary of the 1953 flood, it would be a travesty to approve this application, which seeks to undermine the long established policy against allowing new developments in the, area, in the areas most at risk from the sea. If this application for holiday homes is allowed, it will open the floodgates to further such applications all along the coast. Although the council has discounted our personal concerns in its report, 
I should also say that this development would devastate the lives of those living behind it. Our sun, our light, our views of the sea and the sunset, which is the very reason we live there, would be gone. I know this may be irrelevant to planning law, but it's not irrelevant to us. Were it in a good cause, one could say so be it. But the committee needs to consider the real nature of this application, which is a developer's charter, a Trojan horse, Excuse which would, me. if approved, be just another time. white elephant along Thank the you coast. Very much. Yep. Um, who do we go next? Um, could I have Paul Rawlinson, please? That'd be all right, leave it on. Yeah, leave it on. Good morning. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak on behalf of each and parish council who object to this development. I'd like to thank the planning officers for the clarity and recommend the refusing of the application in their thorough referencing of the Heacham neighbourhood plan, one of the few um, approved spatial plans in this area. The neighbourhood plan policies infringed our uh, policy one. It's a small scale in infill development. This proposal sits outside the dev development boundary and this application clearly against, against this policy. Policy four of the neighborhood plan, principal residence development. This can only be supported where property is of principal house or primary application. Yeah. And it's a holiday property um, in a high, very high uh, flood risk area. Policy five, design principles. Well, the design of this cannot be seen as appropriate to the nature and scale of this area at all. Uh, it's very high, it's sitting on the top of a hill, and the design has four stories. It will have an unacceptable impact on the area. Policy 9 and 15, the proposal effectively removes the separation barrier uh, buffer between Hunstatton and Heacham. And this is a big deal for the village. Developing this area will result in a coalescence of Heacham and Hunstanton, and it will effectively blur the individuality, individuality of both these areas. Policy 17 and policy DN18, which is obviously an S outside the neighborhood plan. Um, these are flood risk policies that recognize the risk of development in very high flood risk areas, such as this location. Um, and I have to say, it's something that supporters seem to be trivialising, but it shouldn't be trivialised. January 1953, uh, the, uh, the storm devastated on Stanton, Snatcham and Heacham, taking the lives of 66 people and, of course, 15 people in Kings Lynn. In 78, 87 and 93 and 2003, we also had pr pretty bad flooding in this area. Um, at that let... Um, immense damage to our area. It's 87, 78, of course, hundreds and hundreds of caravans along this uh, stretch were, were wrecked. Flood risk policies are vitally important for the safety of our communities. So in conclusion, Hitch and Paris Council believes this development tries to drive a coach and horses through the neighbourhood plan, something that we, we, we really are very concerned about. And I would ask the committee to support the officer's recommendation and Heachin Parish Council's request to refuse this application. Thank you very much, Mr. Ron Um We now have Michael Rushton, please. Morning. Morning. Right. What do I do? Nothing. <laughs> Just That's all. you do have three minutes. Thank you. Right, morning, councillors. I'm Vice Chairman of Hunstanton Town Council Planning Committee, and we support this application. We want improvement at this end of Hunstanton. That's why we've got a Hunstanton Advisory Group, and that's why you have a re regeneration and development panel. We like it. We think the provision of a watchtower can only be beneficial. Yet the officer report says, no evidence has been given to need nor justification. Surely something is better than nothing. The officer's 13 page report dwells at length on every reason to refuse, dealing with DM18 and why it should be refused and the flood risk opinions of the Environment Agency. DM18 doesn't say will be refused, it says will be resisted. 
Don't you find it contradictory that the employment, the environment agency wants little or no development in this area, whilst they maintain that the hard defences are fine and need no upgrading? They say there's little risk of catastrophic 1953 type flooding. The policy of the Wash East Coast Management Group, on which your fellow councillors and officers and I have sat for the last 12 years, the policy that was determined was to maintain the current standard of defence. Now, the current standard, by my interpretation and by theirs as well, is that if the sea levels rise, then we're going to lift the defences to maintain the current standard. Going on from there, the officer report comments that because the building destroyed in 1978 was not replaced, the right to replace it now has been lost over the years. Hard to see why, and it really is, seems rather punitive. Many others were replaced at various times. Why not this one? And then we come to the reference to keeping the separation between Hunstanton and Heacham. It's pretty flimsy, isn't it? We're looking at a single plot. We're not looking at a 50-acre field at risk of a whopping great housing development. Then we have the pending wash barrage. Maybe if we don't get that, all of Cambridgeshire would be flooded. If we do get it, the people say 10 years from the off, we'll have to see. But it would be really lovely to see this DM18 blight on improvement removed, or at least for you as a committee, to break with following DM18 to the letter. And we would love to see this application succeed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Could I have David Taylor next, please? David, can you give us the nod when you want us to change slides, please, yeah? Sorry, I didn't catch that, Anne. You can give us the nod when you want us to change slides. Okay, yeah. Because you've got three slides, yeah? Yeah, okay. Thank you. No stop? Yes, ready. Okay. Madam Chair, members, this application is before you on the Environment Agency's recommendation to refuse on the policy DM18 and the risk to flooding. A dwelling previously accommodated this site, and whilst destroyed in the mid-1970s, remnants of the building footprint and services are all still evident. However, whilst a new proposal cannot be referred to as a replacement home under DM18, it should, however, receive a fair appraisal and consideration for redevelopment when considering its unique engineering and mitigation methods, methods proposed. This proposal follows months of collaboration with the Coast Watch and is supported by its members, and it affords an opportunity to provide a community asset and a valuable observation room looking over the beach at Snettisham and Heacham to the pier end of the beach at Hunstan, and it will also serve as a valuable observatory over water sport activities who use this obscured area of coastline. <laughs> the attached small holiday home accommodation would have restricted period occupancy. And this will enable the owner and his family to enjoy their land, which they have been deprived of for the past 40 years. This proposal offers better defences, technologies and accommodation, which older owners in the area are unable to offer. The owners of this site have been, have been penalised for over 40 years unnecessarily because of observations of a negative view on planning and DM18, rather than adopting an appraisal and a view relating to the national progression made towards today's growth and infrastructure being vulnerable, being resilient for tomorrow's climate. Historically, the Met Office state that this plot is only vulnerable to flooding for four hours every 25 years, approximately. Our client has been constantly declined an opportunity to redevelop this site, even to that of a simple recreational garden area, or for locating a mobile home, all under the premise of DM18, whilst others along North and South Beach, especially replacement builds, have continued to gain various approvals. This could suggest the violation of his human rights being considered in a manner 
which looks prejudiced. This may not be the case, however, but the evidence would certainly suggest or indicate it. It is now well publicized that the design and structural integrity of the properties we design and build will be secure, safe and controlled if they are built under the same conditions that DM18 dictates for replacement dwellings. And it is also nationally recognized that our flood warning systems and evacuation procedures are world leading, which will keep people safe. Therefore, DM18 is now an outdated and misleading policy, which is in serious need of review. This is a brave financial, supportive and charitable commitment of the landowner and the Watchtower Station will be bold in its intent and will over time become a well-recognised and compelling landmark to the surrounding Taylor, landscape. You've had your minutes, I'm afraid. I know I was going to get that. I know it goes yeah. so quick. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> Councillor Dark, please, next. Speaking of the Standard Order 34, so he will have five minutes. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Councillors. Sorry, on the walk-in, did you say I've got five minutes? Yes. Is that correct? Thank you. Okay, when you're ready. Yeah, ready. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, Members. I've called this application in as, well as I believe the recommendation by officers to refuse and surrounding circumstances should be considered by you very carefully for its proportionality and clear justification under the Human Rights Act, an act which all UK and planning law is subservient. I respectfully refer you to Human Lives, Equality and Human Rights Commission, the Guide to the Human Rights Act for Public Authorities 2021, and Protocol 1, Article 1, Protection of Property. The Human Rights Act states, everyone has the right to the peaceful enjoyment of their possessions. Public authorities cannot usually interfere with a person's property or possessions or the way that they use them, except in specific limited circumstances. The article requires public authorities to strike a fair balance between the general interests and the rights of individual property owners, and property includes land. The general principle being the greater the impact, the more clearly demonstrated justification has to be. You will see from your papers and have seen during your site visit that the site in question is a singular empty plot, rather like the missing tooth in a child's set of teeth. All around it, there are properties that have been extended, developed, subdivided, or let out over the years. And officers have just said many of these are at a lower level. All around it in the same plane are hundreds of holiday caravans. Planning has permitted these over the years and continues to do so. Some can be enjoyed year round and others have seasonal occupancy restrictions. Indeed, recently, Her Majesty's Government extended the holiday season of the caravan parks into the winter high tides all reassured by the Environment Agency's reported strength of its sea defences and warning systems. Yet here we have a solitary plot, closer to escape routes and safeguarding measures than many, and its owner that seem to have become the front line for no more. Whilst I appreciate and fully endorse the new Heach and Naval plan, no major new developments and keeping the gap, albeit one large garden with Hun Stanton, and planning policy and the EA's rather generic observation of real potential flood risk, these policies and submissions all still have to be very carefully balanced and evidenced versus the undoubted impact of them on this landowner, not a developer or business, somebody trying to enjoy their property. Especially when a property stood on this site until 1979, the proposal is for one building on roughly the same footprint. The land is not being subdivided, but is attempting to be enjoyed by its owner. And importantly, to my knowledge to date, our planning department has refused the owner of previous building, the right to park a camper van overnight on this his own land during the summer months when there are thousands of holiday makers all around, i.e. not winter high tides, and more recently advised even a secure shed to store equipment for enjoyment of it as a beach garden. So you now have in front of you this latest attempt by the owner, someone who has been and is still commendably trying to engage and work with this authority for some sort of permitted use by giving the Coast Guard a lookout point as part of their application. We've reached a point almost to the extent of a refusal that the owner can use this land for next to nothing. That really concerns me. If it were your land, how frustrated would you be seeing all the permitted properties and businesses around you? 
And would you, at the very least, be wanting to have more demonstrable thought given to proportionality and balance than at present? Think of the detailed EIAs as counsellors we see on other sites and other developments about the impact of the people of what we're trying to do. I ask that you relook at your papers and consider whether officers, the EA, and other recommending refusal have given you enough detail that they have discharged their legal duty, reproportionality, and the impact on this landowner sufficiently. We all know the detail the EIAs we do elsewhere. If you consider they haven't, I ask that you either ask for a deferral so this work can be adequately done and brought back around the impact on this landowner and their property, or if you are satisfied that the impact of refusal is disproportionate to the public risk of this singular building, which the owner is readily willing to accept, and you can put restrictions on, then you should, in observance of the law, the Human Rights Act, consider allowing this isolated case through. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Gidney now, please. All right, Peter. Yeah. You want to put your mic on? Thank you. Right, ready? Okay. Okay. Thank you. It's just a recap, really, from what I've heard. The EEA officers and planning officers work within adopted planning policies. The planning committee can and should apply good sense and the interest in context with the local community and conditions. This location for this application is the safest of all the plots on the Heach North Beach, being close to the Hunstanton seawall, main seawall, and the earth bank to the rear. It's with easy access. I must say I grew up in this area and so know it very, very well. There's minimal risk to the occupants, especially in the summer, because of this. It's an easy escape and, you know, it, it really is bonkers to say that it's going to risk their lives because the Environment Agency have stated so often they have one of the most advanced um, flood warning systems in Europe. The lookout, as I call it, will be useless useful, sorry, and supported by the RNLA and the Coast Watch community. These people know what they're talking about and know the needs of the local community. I've also spoke to, spoken to a local police officer in, who supports this application. She says it's of help with the finding of missing children, which is a problem because they can't get the drones quick enough to, to the coast. And also, with smuggling activities should they occur, and also to co coordinate, coordinate and monitor um, search operations. Local, local surf, um, windsurfing and other water activities will benefit from being overlooked by this, um, by the lookout. Directions for operations will be more easily coordinated, especially in the event of flooding. The wider community will benefit from this application. This application will cause no demonstrable harm to anyone. That's all I've got to say. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Anything to add, please, Stuart? Just a few things between us. I'll just pick up some of the comments from the speakers. Um, just referred to that as, as, as minimal risk. I would caution against that. You clearly got strong objection from the Environment Agency. There's also an in inference that DM18 is, is out of date. It's not, I'd say, it's more relevant than ever, clearly being carried over to the new, the new local plan. And we've won numerous appeals in that area um, on, on this ground. It, in fact, I can't remember when we've lost one on, in terms of on, on, on this issue uh, of, of blood risk. Um, uh, the, other, the other thing I'll just mention is I think the, the in terms of the caravans and the holiday parks, that was obviously to do with COVID and I think that's now expired. That was a temporary uh, consent only with our special circumstances, but that has has um, expired. Surely it has. I don't know. 
Uh, thank you, um, Chairman, obviously Councillor Dark and, and uh, Mr Taylor referred to um, the Human Rights Act. Um, Lucy? Yeah, so we have regard to human rights um, as a material plan of consideration and have respect to the rights of occupiers uh, to respect private and family life and the home is a qualified right. Uh, we need to weigh that against the wider public interest, which in this case aims to prevent risk to life by restricting new dwellings in areas at very high flood risk of flooding in a coastal flood risk hazard zone. The legitimate aim is only able to be upheld by resisting the proposal and is proportionate and would not result in a violation of the rights of the applicant. Further, it's noted that the proposed development is a holiday home and is not the principal residence of the applicant. Um, and in regards to replacement dwellings, which was brought up, um, there's been no dwelling on site for well, since 1979. So it, the use has been abandoned and that can't be replaced. Thank you. Uh, just, just one final thing on that. It, it, again, back to the human rights issue. I mean, obviously the applicant has a home. Um, this is a second home, not a principal residence, a second home. And, and again, in that balancing, clearly the legitimate aims of the development plan in, you know, in protecting um, people's lives outweighs um, that, you know, that, that, that requirement for a second home. Thank you, Chairman. Right, Councillor Bowen first, then I've got Long, then I've got Morley, and then I'll carry on after that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Looking at the proposal, I just don't like it. I don't think it's it, it's completely juxtaposed to the vernacular of the the rest of the uh, uh, housing on 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 the road. It doesn't fit with the neighbour. It's ultra modern and it's and it would stand stand out alone. Um, the previous application I abstained because there was no clear natural and I couldn't decide. But this one is completely um, do uh, yeah uh, against it. So I'm not opposed. And I can see some merit with regards to the um, having the, the lookout tower. But as it stands, it's far too modern. And it doesn't fit fits the area it's going to sit in. So I, I support the officer's recommendation based on that. Councillor Long. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I, this is one of those ones that, you know, it, it's difficult because I appreciate the reasoning behind why we have DM18. There are holiday homes with restricted occupancy all along that stretch of coast. Mm. If someone was going to knock one down and build, build one up to replace, um, we would, they would, even if they built it to the very best standards on stilts, they would still have their occupancy restrictions, etc. There was a dwelling here previous, which we heard about, or was there, there was obviously something on this land previous that, mm. that enjoyed in the, in, in the 70s. In the 70s, okay. Um, since then, we've had higher tidal surge levels. Um, and actually in 2013, December, um, you, know, the, 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 you know, the actual height of the surge plus the tide was higher. And yet generally the defences in that location uh, held up and functioned as they should. Going forward, we hear that the shoreline management plan is currently under review and that some of those hold the line policies are being considered um politically i think that's obviously the wrong approach and and actually hold the line is relevant and important um if the applicant here was her majesty's coast guard or the Royal National Lifeboat Institution, and they needed that facility because it was essential to the defence of the coast, it would be pretty easy for me to say, yes, I fully support this. But it's another holiday home. And yes, if given an observation tower um, or given an, you know, an observation point, um those those organizations obviously of course they would support that somebody's providing them with an observation platform you know as, as part of the fact that they're building a, a, a holiday accommodation if we were if we were to accept it and give it approval with a limited occupancy 
Um, presumably the Coast Guard and RNLI and anyone else who needed to use the observation deck in an emergency um, would have access to it 365 days a year. Would that then put them at risk if they were cut off by the water? This is a, this is a real dilemma of an application for me. Um, I'll be listening to what others say, um, but I may, on, on balance, be looking for that it be approved. I just want to say to members, though, that I do have a caravan at Foreshores, and just so everyone's aware, which is obviously the side of ski ramp, and I myself have witnessed last summer, because of how far the tides went out and the sandbanks exposed, it seemed to be a race. Who could walk the furthest out to Skegness? And then the tides coming in and the number of people this time that got trapped out there. Mm. And if it wasn't for some of the boat owners, never mind the love it, because there were so many calls out, mm. as long with wells, that there are problems out there. But I don't know, because reading this on page 74, we've no mechanism how to secure this Coast Guard tower for people. And all of these are important factors if you're going to look at this seriously. You can't just say, look, we'll put this tower in. You know, I think there's some more detail needed to come forward to if there was to be help for this application. Obviously, at the moment, we have it uh, occupancies for some of the houses, like we just one previous one, April to October. That seems fair and reasonable. But on the other hand, we do have these other policies. It is a high risk of flood. And I'm just listening further to the debate. Councillor Morley, please. I, I've also, while well, I just hear, I've asked, Thank you, for, just one second, Councillor Morley. There is one other thing I've asked if we could have a timetable put up at South Beach, because that's some of the problem, because the amount of tourists that come in, not aware of the tides, and it is a possible way of going. Anyway, that's all I'm saying. Right, Councillor Morley's got the floor. Thank you, Chair. I mean, I find uh, citing the Human Rights Act uh, as a reason uh, to alter the officer's recommendations more than bizarre, actually, in particular when the country's prime minister uh, intends to withdraw this country from uh, the influence of this act. If there is a national uh, or public risk from small boats walking across the Skegness, uh, there is an issue. sea surges, the Environment Agency, the uh, RNLI, the Coast Guard Watch should sponsor the appropriate early warning system. This is, we don't need this warning system under the radar, so to speak, by somebody trying to enhance uh, their holiday home. Now, there might be a case for DMA team to be, uh, um, the rationale of DMA team to be more widely promoted and, and uh, for understanding and acceptance. However, uh, I don't see any reason now but to support the recommendation uh, coming from the uh, from the officers. Chair, if you if you if you heard that last speech, thank you. Right, thank you, Councillor Parrish. Then I've got Councillor Wally. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just have to be careful that I'm becoming sensed about this. Um, oh, I'll watch thank you. Things. Thank you, officers, for a comprehensive report with references both to the local plan and the Heacham neighbourhood plan. Um, I have corrected the fact that my calling was withdrawn because your recommendation was so clear. The local plan, first of all, well, for reasons explained by officers in the agenda, new dwellings are not allowed along North or South beaches. This is principally due to the location being the coastal hazard zone. There are frequent applications which seek to breach policies which are consistently refused by the LPA and such refusals have been upheld at appeal. Paragraphs 1, 2, 3, page 75. The Environment Agency objects. Strongly, page 17. The Emergency Planner for this Authority objects. Page 17, page 71. We've just had an application which you approved because the um, application did not um, increase the number of habitable rooms. Building a new property obviously does increase the number of habitable rooms because there aren't any there at the moment. Now, what has been neglected in many of the speakers, not the first two speakers, but the speakers uh, for this proposal, is uh, Eacham's neighbourhood plan, which is part of the local plan, is most recent, and you have to take into serious consideration. And we're not talking about little bits and bobs of the neighbourhood plan that is an iffy, iffy argument, as 
opinion. These are clear, um, or this application is, is clearly against um, major um, uh, policies within that neighbourhood plan. It's outside the development boundary and outside the existing tourist sites mapping of each of the neighbourhood plan. Each of the neighbourhood plan does allow um, a change in tourism use within certain areas. And this is outside that area. New residences, which this would be, as a policy for requirement to be a principal residence. You can't build new residences in the Heacham neighbourhood plan, which are holiday homes or second homes. It has to be principal. And you can't have a principal residence in this location because it's in a coastal hazard zone. So it can't be built under the Heacham neighbourhood plan. And you can't just dismiss the Heacham neighbourhood plan, principal policy uh, in that way. The proposal fails to meet policy requirements for new holiday accommodation. Policy nine, see page 76 of the agenda. I didn't bother writing all the text again, but it's there for you to read if you've read it. So you turn to page 76 of the agenda. Sorry for the delay, it's a bit rushed for space here. Yeah? We're talking about page 76 at the bottom. Page 76, it's got numbers halfway there. Oh, right. Maintain the distinction between the contrasting holiday centres of Heacham and Hunstanton and do not diminish the physical separation between these centres. I'll comment on that in a minute. Minimise any visual and physical impact on the village, uh, etc., and, and, and not directly adjacent to any residential areas. And officers have justified why they agree with those statements. Uh, Note, maintaining a gap and not diminishing physical separation between Heacham and Santon, policy 15 of the neighbourhood plan, settlement rates, clearly states new development must not result in the coalescence of Heacham with Unstanton to the north. Now, you might think, well, this is only a small gap. Well, I'm afraid because it's a small gap, it's an important gap. Heacham has already suffered from uh, other closures of uh, space between Unstanton and Heacham prior to the neighbourhood plan being written. And um, from 2016, it's a very sensitive area in each of keeping the separation. And it should be noted that the Hunstanton neighbourhood plan goals and objectives, bullet point three, Hunstanton, Heacham and the Holds Hunstanton should remain as separate settlements. And policy J7 says any developments should not result in the coalescence of Hunstanton with Heacham. During discussions between Heacham and Hunstanton about separations, Hunstanton stated that they wanted to maintain separation but it would be up to Heacham to provide the gap. This proposal is within a gap in Heacham and must on the neighbourhood plan policy be maintained. And I just stress, um, because of the nature of one of the speakers, this land, this proposal is in Heacham. It's not in Hunstanton. If Hunstanton wants this tower, by all means have a tower in Stanton, but have it in Hunstanton, not in Heacham. And I'm sure you can find some land somewhere that's provided. Thank you very much. Right, Councillor Diwali, you did well. well. I've got some more to say, but I've missed Yeah, but you've had your five minutes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry, Stuart just wishes to come back on some of your comments. Oh, at the end. All right, then, Councillor Diwali. Thank you, Chair. Um, I know it's on page 77. A lot has been made about the fact that there was a property on there up to about 1978 79. What hasn't been made quite so clear is that the as it states on page 77 of our um, uh, report, the bungalow was destroyed as a result of severe damage during the 1978 flood. Now, I'd like to understand from officers the calculation for the 50-year um, 2% um, annual prob probability standard, when that was calculated and how, how, for how long it is valid. Because uh, my understanding from um, um, eminent experts and the, the fact that NASA measures um, AOD is that we experience one inch of sea level rise of roughly every 10 years. And the rate of sea level rise is not going to go down, it's going to go up. And this is not for decades or hundreds of years, it's likely millennia. Um, now, that is a pretty scary prospect. Going back to our human rights, the, uh, the UN Human Rights Council um, on 28th of July 2022 um, said that we have a, um, a right to, the, to access clean, healthy 
and sustainable environment. Um, so to me, it seems complete madness. If we have a property that was destroyed in 1978 due to flood, there has not been a significant improvement in flood defences, and um, we are seeing the risk of flood going up dramatically over the lifetime of this development. I can't support this. I agree with the officers. Thank you. Thank you. But Stuart, do you wish to come back? Yeah, just to say, I'm going to often say this, but I would have strong concerns of approving this. I mean, the applicant does have a right of appeal, of course, so if it is refused, they can go to uh, this planning inspectorate and put their, their case to them. Uh, my, my concern is just consistency of policy and obviously precedent, a number of appeals that we've won on this ground, flood risk and safety, uh, risk to life uh, in that area. Thank you. Right, members, there's nobody else. So I'm going to take you to the recommendation to refuse. Cathy, please. Just voting on refuse. Thank you. Councillor Bone. Oh. Councillor Bower. Four. Councillor Bubb. Four. Councillor Holmes. Four. Councillor Howland. Four. Councillor Hudson. Four. Councillor Lawton. Four. Councillor Manning. Four. Councillor Knockholds. Four. Councillor Parrish. <laughs> Four. Councillor Spiking. Four. Councillor Tyler. Four. Councillor Dewali. Four. Councillor Whitby. Four. Councillor Rose. Four. Councillor Morley. Four. And Councillor Long. Four. Thank you. That was carried. That's carried. carried. Right. We now move on to page 83 members. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Hilgi, variation of condition one of planning permission is a full application. The recommendation is approved. Okay, Lorna, uh, are you now available? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Not very well. Oh, okay. Talk loud. <laughs> Hi again, please, Lorna. Hello, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? No. no. Not well. Sure. Probably so, Are you on headset? I am on headset. Is that causing problems? Well, if you just speak up. Yeah, if you, if you can just sh shout. Okay, you know. I'll speak as loud as I you can. Want me to catch it to continue sharing, just in case. Yeah, you... yeah, do that. If you, if you carry on, that would be brilliant. Um, thanks. Um, okay. Okay, brilliant. Um, so this application um, seeks retrospective consent for an amended design for a two-story dwelling. Um, the dwelling was cons was not constructed in accordance with the approved plans at the reserved matters stage, um, specifically the positioning and size of the windows on the rear and front elevations, and this application seeks to regularise it. So in terms of this application, um, you can see the property itself is within the red line. Um, so to, there's an access road to the south of that that links down, that's how you, the property is reached off Lawrence Lane. Um, to the west, um, the properties to the west are all on the high street and it's located behind Reed House, this property itself. And then the properties 11, 15 and 17, you can see above, those ones were on Hill Court. Um, and directly north of the application site, um, you'll see there's a public green space. So um, directly north of the house. I've sent Stuart out to go and get the caretaker because one of the screens isn't working. Plus, oh, okay. there's too much talk in the town hall in the back there that we can't hear. So if they'd like to talk outside, I'd be very grateful. OK, so shall I hold off? And yes. Them now? Yeah. OK. Yeah, we've got him. Yeah, they're still... Brian? Do me a favour, ask them to go outside. We know they're all chit chat in there, like tag and buys. Yeah, or, or Hannah. Hannah's going. No, we're not allowed to. No. No, otherwise I would with great pleasure. Sorry, I got that. Yeah, we're sorting that out. We're sorting that out. We're getting there. Right, off you go again, Lorna. Okay, so do you want me to carry on from where I was? Or do you want me to start again? Carry on, please. Okay, okay. Um, so to the next slide, please. Okay, so this is what um, is under, this is the old applications. This was what was originally approved here. So you can kind of see the, um, the windows on the front and rear elevation, the first floor ones were set down about 0.5 metres from the eaves. And also on the rear elevation, the central window, which serves a landing, is smaller than what has actually been built on site. 
um, and also at the rear ground floor windows um, they're larger than what's actually been built on site um, if I can have the next plan so this is what's actually been built on site so you can see the windows on the front and rear on the first floor are now just directly below the eaves and then you can also see on the rear elevation that they're slightly smaller windows at ground floor but then the first floor window in the center um, which serves the landing is um, double the size, about, uh, roughly double the size, about 2.4 metres in length, but that serves a landing area. Um, I just want to highlight the first floor bedroom window, um, the one on the plat, yeah, sorry, the one nearest, the yeah, that one there, that one's got an obscure glazing, so that's still obscure glazed as what was originally approved, because that one's a secondary window, so there's already a window at the front for that one. Thank you. Next slide, please. So these are the photos. So we've got the front elevation of the house. You can see how the first floor windows have been constructed directly below the eaves. Um, next one. Um, this again shows the front garden and the front of the property. Next slide. Um, this is looking south towards a neighbouring dwelling, looking from the front of the property. Um, next slide. And then this one's facing um, south towards Lawrence Lane. So that's where you'd access the building from that area. And you can see the side of the dwelling on your right here. Um, next slide, yeah. Um, this is looking north. So you can see the side of the dwelling, but looking the other way. And you can see the properties on Hills Court on the right here. Next slide. And so this is the rear elevation of the house. You can see the upper floor windows are directly below the eaves and the longer window in the center and the slightly smaller windows on ground floor. And you can see it's directly next to that um, green space I referred to the property. Um, next slide. And this is again, looking at the rear elevation, you can see the neighboring barn, which is to the west. Um, next slide. This is again showing the west elevation. So you can see there's no flank windows proposed. Um, next slide. So then this is standing at the very back of the property. You can see the green space and you can see the properties on Hills Court. Um, oh, no, sorry. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I've got the wrong. And so this is going west towards High Street. So you're standing at the side of the property and you're looking west. So this is the rear and front elevations of properties on High Street to the side of the property. Thank you. Next slide. And these ones are now looking north towards Hills Court. Um, next slide, please. That's the end, thank you. So the application is being recommended for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Holmes, then I'm gonna have to say something. Thank you. Um, as you can see, I've called this here. Um, this is retrospective application. And you can see from the various slides that the difference between the original and what's been built it's not particularly significant. However, it does, um, the extra window in the center, if you could go to page, uh, slide 94. That one, yeah. Is, oh, yeah. that's the one, yes. Um, overviews the garden to the left of that. Um, and one of the reasons why the, a joining window again to the left uh, was obscured was to avoid such a thing. Um, now, you may see this is a very small matter, but as far as I'm concerned, it, this has been, not been built as it was supposed to have been built. And the applicant could quite easily have come to the council and asked for a variation before actually doing it. They didn't. Uh, and again, you know, I just think unless we start putting down markers for, for applicants, they can continue to do this. And you have seen recently in, in another application in the village I live in, a significant amount of change uh, occurred. And uh, again, a retrospective application for the changes. It's unacceptable in my view. I think the developer in this case, um, PKS, they're well known, uh, well respected. So I'm really surprised that they didn't consider that there may be uh, a, 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 an objection to it being built uh, in the way it has been. Um, I'm not quite sure why they made the small, the windows a smaller size either, but that's another thing. Um, 
I just feel that we need to, to at least make sure that these are properly considered and done before rather than after being built. Thank you. I've put my name down next. Well, to me, when it comes along like this as a retrospective, it feels like it's fate to company that we sort of roll over and accept it. I have to say, if this had come to us as a proper planning application, I'd have been more than happy to have refused it. I find the windows small. I don't like the elongated one in the middle. I think the whole thing is awful. I'm sorry, I just don't like it. I know other buildings have got windows tucked under the window, uh, tucked under the gutter, but each case is on its merit. These windows are tiny. They barely throw any light at all into the main dwelling. And then to overcome it, they then put these elongated window in the middle. Well, the whole ethos of the look of the build is gone. And to me, this isn't suitable. And you build it at your risk. And I'm sorry, I'm going to recommend that we refuse it. Sorry, Whoa, I've got suddenly an old hand of it. <laughs> sorry, Terry, I was nearly in your seat there. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I haven't. I've got wrong. Oh, sorry. Now, wait a minute. Um, the reason I want to go for refusal is that the design is not appropriate and that the middle window, the elongated, has no, um, doesn't add to the design and look of the build. Okay. And the impact? Okay, you know, no, that's fine, Chair. I mean, I, I would just say, I mean, obviously it's not public facing this, but I was going to suggest there is another option potentially, if, if it was just the concern, the bottom four panes, you could condition the middle, the bottom four, the, the, to be obscurely glazed, the bottom bit, if, if that was the issue overlooking with the neighbour in terms of the um, uh, no. the landing. But if, 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 if it's more widespread than that in terms of the, the overall design, that's, that's a different issue. So who do I have for the second? Right. <laughs> I think there's a lot of hands went up. Okay. Now I've got Canton along next in Parish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Madam Chairman, I'm, I'm kind of glad that you proposed what you did. I mean, the original plans as submitted to me was an attractive looking property and would have been, an, you know, a real positive addition to the location that it sits in. What is built, I mean, I worked in fenestration for the best part of about 20 years, and I don't know that I would ever have advised any of my clients mm. to create something that looked like that i mean it takes away from looking like a, a domestic home into something like a converted warehouse you know it, <laughs> huge brick frontage tiny windows i know that you know windows that sort of generally have got smaller as the years have gone by because of energy efficiency but at the detriment of the look you know that's going to be there forever and I, there's no way that I would have considered that that ought to have been given plan and permission like that in the first place. So retrospectively, I believe they'll have to try and change. Well, in my opinion, that is, of yeah, course. My uh, in my opinion, I don't know what <laughs> In my opinion, it wouldn't have been given permission looking like that in the first place, or shouldn't have been. And uh, on that basis, I'm happy to second what you're proposing. Huh? The original. Yeah, but this isn't the original. This is what they then took. The other in. plan may well have got a bit yeah. at appeal, but would this that have doesn't got mean to say we've got rubber appeal. stamp this? No. Right, Council Parish. Then I've Good got I wanted to speak so that I could say I agree with you, Council Parish. <laughs> <laughs> right. And um, uh, there are several issues here, aren't there? The first thing I was, I was taken aback by the smallness of those yeah. principal windows because I know energy efficiency is one thing, but then again, if you've got to have your lights on all the time, you know, um, and yeah. then you've got this additional window, which has magically appeared. And Mr. Common Sense is missing from our... Uh, I know, I miss you know, him. And I'm sure Mr. Common Sense would have said another retrospective planning application. Um, and officers have said in the past, so what you should ask yourself is, if it had come forward like this at the original application, would you have agreed it? Because if you would have agreed it, then... The retrospective application is fine but if you wouldn't have agreed it well obviously it's not fine and i think what you said is that you wouldn't have agreed to this yeah. and the original application and neither would i so um, it's whatever it's it's refused yes yeah 
Can I just ask, one of the things I notice is there's a great expanse of brick before you get to the window. What is the yeah. depth? Do you sort of have to go like this to get to it? That's what it looks like. It's all have you got a bit of reach in. I wondered if it was built up for flood risk. No change in levels, but even so. I was wondering if it was something flooding there. I just want to add uh, a word of clarification. My neighbours, my the neighbour, my constituents, yes. main concern is the additional window in the centre. In the middle, which we have said we don't like as well. Exactly, but it's yeah. not the actual size of yeah. the... Yeah, an overlooking, yeah. And ca yeah, cast above. Thank you. Yes, I also agree that this looks pretty um, unsatisfactory now, but my question is, what's the secondary means of exit? Because if you can get through that window, you've got a really great drop to go down. There doesn't seem to be a second door <laughs> in the property. <laughs> no. That's comply with building regulations. I mean, we don't know if it does. Is, I know, but, but yeah, that, that wouldn't be a reason. That's like any house. You, you, that would be a reason for refusal in itself. Um, I would stick to the, the planning reasons, which, as I've got at the moment, are the rear elevation by virtue of the small windows, cent, um, central, large central window, excessive amount of yeah. brickwork to window, yeah. uh, poor design, and also leads to um, potentially more overlooking. Right. Well, then, in which case, Kathy, you can take the recommendation to refuse, please. That's what we're voting on, member, refuse. Thank you. Councillor Bone? Oh. Councillor Bower? Oh. Councillor Bubb? Four. Councillor Holmes? Four, naturally. Councillor Howland? Four. Councillor Hudson? Four. Councillor Lawton? Four. Councillor Manning? Four. Councillor Knuckles? Four. Councillor Parrish? Four. Councillor Spiking? Four. Councillor Tyler? Four. Councillor Diwali? Four. Councillor Whitby? Four. Councillor Rose? Four. Councillor Morley? Four. And Councillor Long? Oh, yes, it's carried in there, right. Sorry. That's recommendation to refuse is Carol carried. We now go on the last one 91 Old Hand Stanton creation of a new holiday let by subdivision, etc. It's a full application. The recommendation is approved. Anna, thank you, Lucy. Lucy, right, Lucy, Lucy's thank you very much. There. Oh, you have oh, well done. Look at me. Uh, this is an application for the subdivision of an existing bed and breakfast. Oh, yeah to use as a holiday let and then retaining the dwelling to the rear. Um, it's at Corner House, Homer Road, Hunt Stanton. Um, so limited external changes are proposed. Uh, this is the existing, because the existing dorm is on that rear slope. And then this is the proposal. So they're adding dormer windows to the front and then replacing the ones to this uh, internal rear-facing slope. And then these are the floor plans. Um, there's an existing door here, which will be replaced with a wall with a hidden bookcase door. And then the front will largely be the holiday let with the rear retained for the owners. This is just 3D for you to show the same thing. And then this is the existing dwelling. So the dormers are going on the front. And then this will be just um, upgraded to provide a little bit more parking space to the front. And then this is the satellite view showing those existing dormers, just for clarity. The key issues are on page 91 of the agendas. The application is recommended for approval and has been brought to committee following the officer recommendation is contrary to, Sifton, uh, contrary to the parish council and it's been referred by Sifton panel. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Right, members, anyone wishing to speak on this one? Councillor Lawson. This is in a very dangerous position on that problem. Now, I think at the moment it's being used as a permanent resident, which isn't too bad because the people get used to using the drive. It's a bit of breakfast. Get used to using the drive in a safe way. But as a holiday accommodation, of people coming down for the week, it's going to take over a week to get used to going in up there. And when the traffic comes 
out of all them standing around that corner that tends to speed up. Um, and that's what makes it dangerous. Highways have no objection, so you couldn't... I'm surprised. Well, that's what this report says. This property, I myself have seen it as we drive through and everything, has been a bed and breakfast. And really, just having that other building just used for longer term, to me, it's not really going to make much difference. The, the cars are still going to be in. They're going to change some of the frontage so there's better as you come round anyway because of it. I think it will enhance it than what it is now because it is having works done on it because we've seen the skips and stuff. So, Councillor Bauer. Uh, Chair, I was just going to say what, much what you, you, you said. It's been used as a bed and breakfast and actually it, as a let, it will, will be less fewer cars going in and out, really. Um, and there is, highways have uh, advised about how you go in and how you go out of the drive. And it hasn't been a problem for the last few decades. Right, well, Councillor Long. Just a little concern regarding, I mean, obviously it's a listed building mm. and there is the addition of dormer windows. Mm -hmm. Because it's a listed building, would we be able to condition the materials used in the creation of those dormers? You know, I don't, yeah. I don't want to see. They have to bring in a TV. listed building now. They it, have to come in yes. a separate listed yeah. building now. Yes. So that would be the thing that determines that it wasn't, I don't know, plastic quite dormers there, that you get there in There is a listed building shower. application in right now, and that will condition materials and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that long as that's covered, I'm that's happy. Thank yeah, you. No problem. That's the chance. So in which case, I'm going to take you to the recommendation to approve, Cathy, please. Thank you. Councillor Bone? Four. Councillor Bauer? Four. Councillor Burb? Four. Councillor Holmes? Four. Councillor Howland? Four. Councillor Hudson? Four. Councillor Lawton? Councillor Manning? Four. Councillor Knuckles? Four. Councillor Parrish? Four. Councillor Spiking? Four. Councillor Tyler? Four. Councillor DeWally? Four. Councillor Whitby? Four. Councillor Rose? Four. Councillor Morley? Four. And Councillor Long? Four. Yeah, that's carried. Chair. That's carried. Well, thank you very much. Now we move on to page 100 at 99. Applications determined under delegated powers. These are we happy with what we've seen there? If not, are then we agree? In agree. which case, close the meeting.